Thank you, Gorana. Uh, well, we, we start. Um, today, the idea is that we speak little and you work a lot, so we are going to be faster in the, the first place. Uh, we present ourselves. My name is Florencia Guastavino. I'm from Wikimedia Argentina Education and Human Rights Program. I work with Luisina. A lot of you know her. She's on maternity leave, so she can't be here, but she sends a lot of greetings for everyone. And well, we work uh, in Argentina uh, with high school, teachers, universities, and a lot of um, virtual courses experience. And well, today I'm going to talk about a specific material that is called Teaching with Wikipedia, but uh, we are going to talk later. So, Galder. Hello, good afternoon. I'm Galder Gonzalez. I'm from the Basque Wikimedia User Group. Uh, we work mainly with, uh, we started working mainly with universities and then we have been expanding to secondary school and in the last years also to primary schools. So we are trying to test different things that may or not be interesting. And well, that's it. Let's, let's go. Well, we will explain what we are going to do today. So our first step is to present day present uh, both the experience of Basque Wikimedia User Group and Wikimedia Argentina in these specific materials. Then you are going to try with a guide to design or to start to think about your own proposal. Uh, we are going to present high school or primary schools uh, materials, but you can think of university if you like, that is on your own. And then we'll have some time to share what, what you have done. So we will dedicate mainly the activity of uh, the designing of your own proposal so you can take something home, back home, to start thinking about the new materials. Okay, so I start. Well, as I told you, I, I'm going to talk about the, this project that is the series Teaching with Wikipedia, Enseñar con Wikipedia in Spanish. I brought the material here, we have it online and on paper, so I will leave some of the booklets in each table, so you can see it. Sorry for people that doesn't understand Spanish. <laughs> it's only written in Spanish, but you can look at the pictures and, and everything. So this is a series of five booklets that we designed in 2020 during the main part of the COVID pandemic. And I don't know if you know, but in Argentina, the closers of the schools were during the whole 2020 so kids and uh, young people didn't went to face-to-face uh, -face school during that year, that whole year. And also in Argentina, uh, we have a really huge um, diversity or inequality in access to connectivity. So this was a really big problem for all the country because not everyone has an internet connection, not everyone has a like uh, notebooks and not everyone has cell phones. The reality of all families was that in some families one cell phone was for the ed education of all the kids. So with that problem in the education program of Wikimedia Argentina we thought what we can do to help in some way what was going on with education in Argentina. So uh, we, uh, before that, we have a proposal that was the editing clubs. Uh, you can imagine uh, we uh, edit uh, Wikipedia with young students. And that, of course, couldn't be done uh, during the, the pandemic of COVID. So we designed this series of, of booklets that has like different steps on teaching how Wikipedia can be used, but not for editing, that was really challenging during the pandemic, but how to read Wikipedia, how to understand how Wikipedia is written, how to investigate using Wikipedia. For example, this booklet, the green one, has, for example, explanations about how you use categories, how do we use Wikidata, how uh, we hear how, how do we use Wikimedia Commons, for example, to to go through a human rights perspective. So each booklet also has um, a topic about curricula in Argentina. For example, the first one is vinculated with uh, what we call prácticas del lenguaje, that is like Spanish teaching or reading comprehension. Uh, the second one is with uh, natural sciences. The third one with uh, social and history sciences. So the idea was to make something that was really useful for teachers and that it speaks to teachers to learn how to, how to read Wikipedia. And then at the back of, of the booklets, I don't know if uh, someone can lend me 
just for a minute. We have some activities. Every booklet has uh, five or four activities that start in this, sorry, in this page. Actividades means activities in Spanish. And all the activities has like an online and an offline proposal. We have like this, like the Wi-Fi logo. So if it's cross, you can use it without Wi-Fi. So you can print it or you can fo uh, photocopiar. I don't know the word in English, photocopy. <laughs> we use photocopies in Argentina uh, still. Uh, and the teacher can take this to the schools because teachers were like uh, teaching with paper, especially in rural zones or in the fields where the, there are no connectivity. So the idea is to think how to use Wikipedia, that it's an online uh, tool without uh, internet. So it's really like a, a complex uh, idea, but it's like our our goal because still we, we can't use in every in every school Wikipedia with uh, internet. So we, we wanted to, to teach some uh, tools of digital literacy and we think that with this serial we, we can uh, reach to the schools. In 2020, we also printed the material and we sent it to 300 uh, teachers all over the country by mail, not email, but real mail. We, we go to the post, we put it on the post, and people get it in their houses so they can uh, take it to their schools. And in the last years, we have been making some virtual courses with these booklets so that they can continue using it uh, the experience. So, well, this is I, obviously you can download it from Commons, and if you like, you can translate it. It's totally free to use and to reuse. That's great. So our situation is quite different. Most of the students in the Basque Country have internet at home. And, but also in 2020, um, we had uh, a school closure, so we started to think what we could do to help, to help teachers and to help students. And we also had, this has been discussed in other places, but we have this sensation that, okay, now people will be starting to think about production in internet. It didn't happen as we expected, and now people is also returning to normal life with um, not internet um, uh, activities. So what we did, this is the Basque Wikipedia main page, and here there is a education portal directly. So he, what we did is rearrange all the things we had in education, like to be very basic portal. So here in the left we have is what do you want to learn today? So this is dedicated to students and you have like by topics, like, um, I don't know, geography and history. And you have topics that are in secondary education. So you have them here, what topics are, how is their current status, if they are properly done or not. But um, we try here also to have a section for teachers. This is the teacher's room or something like that. And before, it was the opposite. We had a teacher's room and then there was a section for students, but uh, some people say that it was better if we did the opposite. So what we have here is we have these booklets also. These are the booklets that also exist from Wikiedu Foundation, uh, translated into Basque. But um, they are not very effective, actually. Uh, we have been with these booklets going class by class and giving to the students and giving to the teachers, but I think that they don't want to read uh, or act, actual physical books. So what we have been doing here is documenting things you can do, how you can learn with Wikipedia. So there are brief, there are brief ideas like, uh, I don't know, how to document your botanic garden, if there is a botanic garden in your own place. So you have here like what we can do, some examples of people who has been doing something like that, what are the competencies you are working on and how to do, how to upload and some other materials and other ideas you, you can make. And they are organized by first education, secondary, and some ideas that are in university that are besides writing an article, like I don't know how to I don't know how to research with Wikidata, like some basic ideas of Wikidata, some queries, etc. And what we are trying to do now is to scale this 
and have more real activities we are doing because in the past country education is changing um, from um, subject centered uh, education to uh, um, I don't know how to say this to a problem solving based equation, uh, education so subjects are going to disappear and it will be more like okay we have this problem and this so we have been advised that we can generate we can generate problems we can create problems now we can create situations where students can learn to solve a problem with wikipedia and so we have like uh, i don't know for example how to teach about um, straight, uh, rare diseases in in wikipedia and this is something written by uh, pedagogy students so this is how to do it uh, how to start EDC. The main problem with this is that it's not very well known by, by teachers. The other thing we made when we started with, um, when the pandemic started, was to rearrange the help page, like uh, still guide, how to start, this is a tutorial step by step. And also we recorded the normal explanation we made in the classroom, like a one hour explanation of how Wikipedia works in a series of six videos. Uh, it's done by my kind uh, co-worker Ayora. And so this is, uh, are you going to holidays here? Okay, come on. So here you can see that there are all the all the videos. There are like around ten minutes, except the fourth one that is knowing all this, all the things that there are in the editor. That is the longer one. Students, I know that they see it at two per, at two uh, twice the speed, like to make it uh, longer. So this is Ayora in her home because we couldn't go out uh, explaining how to use it and. The interesting thing of these videos is that they were created in a pandemic situation, but after that, we have some teachers in the university that have said us, don't come to our classroom. I mean, if you have, if you have a video or you have something, I can recommend it and they will see it at home. And there are some courses that are now auto generated or auto, they are out learning for themselves using these videos and the result is pretty similar to and I will say in some cases it's better because you can see the video with the exact part you want whenever, whenever you like. So this in total will be around one hour, thing like that. Okay, so there are th these videos and these are also some short videos that we copied from Wikimedia Argentina some years ago uh, about how to insert a link or whatever. And these kind of things are really interesting when students ask you like, how can I do this? Okay, you can see this video. If you don't understand, please come again. So, learn from yourself also from the resources you have. So, these are the things we have done for both for students and for teachers. That's it. Great. Then, if you have some questions about these examples, uh, we obviously can talk about them. But we will continue now with the workshop and the idea is to think of four steps to start thinking about your own material. Maybe you are already thinking about something so you can uh, continue with that. But we have like four points. Uh, first of all, the starting point, we are going to go now one by one. Uh, where do I start from? Then what Wikimedia project, as you say in, in each video and in each uh, booklet, we don't talk about everything in, in everywhere, we select so we can explain better. Then what modality, it's uh, an auto-guided tutorial, it's a material, it's an activity, and then how I can do it. I will make a video, I will make a booklet, I will make, uh, etc. an infographic, why? Uh, we always want to think that every material is useful if you think to whom you are going to give this material. As you say, as you saw, it's not the same experience in Basque country than in Argentina because we are in different realities, so that is also important. Not every material is useful for, to, for everywhere because we have like different objectives. So the idea is that you can think about your own country or your own uh, place of living and, and to make uh, uh, some, some ideas about that. So we're going to start. We have some photocopias. 
this is really teachy. <laughs> so we are going to, or you can share it. One for each. <laughs> If you want to think in pairs, it's okay, but the idea is that every, each one thinks about their own, uh, own uh, place. So we will have five minutes for the starting point, and we have some guided questions. You don't have to answer everything. You can answer what, what you like. For example, how much do you know about the school, the curriculum, or the educational experience in your country? Are you a teacher? Do you know something about that? How much? Uh, or you know, for some year or some age? At what educational level do you want to place it? Is this for high school? Is this for primary school? Is this for university? And it is something for teachers or for students? As you saw, it's not the same to make something for a teacher than for a student. So would you like to make a material for a teacher or for a student? So we have five minutes so you can think about that. Everyone done with first step? Ah, you went through all, okay. <laughs> we were in first step, but maybe you are really fast, okay. <laughs> well, next step, if you are done with the first one, is which Wikimedia project? This maybe is the easiest one. Which Wikimedia project will you choose? Why? And how do, how do I know it in depth? Uh, and if I don't, what do I have to learn about the use of this project? This is something we consider very important because it's difficult to teach something you don't really know how to use. So it's, it's better, first of all, to learn about that and then to make a teaching material about it. This said, it's interesting that normally, you said, uh, it's very easy because normally it's ah, Wikipedia. Uh, there are lots of other projects that may be more interesting for a school than Wikipedia. Uh, and think about that because maybe your idea would be more suitable for any other project available in your language or in other language. 
I can tell you an, just an example as, as you work. Uh, this year we were making a virtual course with uh, teachers um, in a province that is called La Rioja, that it's a province in the east, west, the west of Argentina near Chile. Uh, we have done the same course the year before uh, for uh, teachers from all, all over the country, mainly of Buenos Aires. And this was the same exact course with the same exact examples and the same exact activity. And during the, the classes, we started to, to know or to think that the teachers in La Rioja weren't as much advanced in uh, digital literacy as they were in, in other parts of the, of the country. For example, they didn't know what a fake news was. So we, have, we say, okay, well, let's stop. The, the activity, or the end of the activity was to make um, an edit on Wikipedia articles, adding a reference. And we say, maybe this is too much for these teachers and they will like leave the course because they won't be able to do it. So we changed to Wikimedia Commons, that is always easier. And we asked them to upload a photo of their own town and then if they like, they could add it to a Wikimedia article. And that was something that they could do. But uh, as Galder said, maybe if we stick to Wikipedia, sometimes it's, it's difficult for the people we are talking to. And there are other ways to enter Wikimedia projects. So are we all done in this step? OK. No, it's, it's you as the designer of the proposal. I mean, you can't teach something that you don't fully understand. So what, what do you need extra for yourself? For example, in the booklet three, we, we teach a brief of about Wikidata. And for that part, we ask uh, Constanza, that was a, a fellow companion of us, to make that part because neither me or Lucina were experts in Wikidata. So if you don't know a lot about that issue, maybe you will be, we will generate a confusing uh, method and maybe you will have to contact someone or you will have to learn. But it's not always that easy to, to explain something you don't know in depth. Okay, well, next step. Uh, modality. I don't know if this is a translation from Spanish that I know if, if not really in English, it's modalidad. <laughs> it, what type of modality will you choose? It's an activity, it's an explanatory text, a tutorial, a guide, an infographic. And why do you choose this? You can't say because it's easy. <laughs> we have to think of maybe why it's useful. It will be like which media you're going to use for explaining this. And so we are going faster, so we have time to share together. Uh, the last one will be really related to that, is which is, is about support, is how is going to be done? Is it a video, digital material, printed material? How, how are we going to physically do it? Um, can it be used autonomously or should it have always an explanation by the authors? Or uh, is it something that we can do ourselves or we have to contact an expert like, okay, I want to make a video, but do I know how to make a video? Do I know how to make this? So it would be what external source we need to do this. That is really important in two ways. For example, for the booklets, we had an editorial that after we wrote the material, she read it again and she makes sure that all the series has sense. 
And then we have a designer that designed each of the, of the booklets. And it, it, with us, she said, well, this picture is no good. I need this in high quality. And it was a process that take uh, all, over six months for the, the first four. And then the other one, the, the last one, was made the next year. Uh, so it was a really uh, amount of time and a lot of money. That that is not <laughs> a minor thing when you think of designing a material. Galder yesterday told us that to make a video, they used uh, 200,000 euros. Uh, this, was, uh, this was a bit cheaper, but it was a lot in, in pesos argentinos, in money of our country. And it was an investment that Wikimedia Argentina did to did this material. So it's, not, it's, it's really important because we know that pretty things are really more interesting. So if we want people to see, to want to have it, we need things that look nice, uh, 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 that, that they are really educational, but that they also look nice. So that is a lot of amount of money and time invest on that. So it's really, really something important. Well, are we all done? Or we have like, some of you are still writing. <laughs> well, now the best part. <laughs> Who wants to share what, what they thought until now? Obviously, we know that everything is a work in progress, but we would like to hear about your ideas. So if anyone wants to tell us what you did. Well, thank you. Uh, should I go step by step? Uh, well, the scenario, the starting point was like the offline community of the YU indigenous people. Uh, it will be mostly for school uh, project for students about uh, collecting the myths and legends of, of their ancestors. Um, that mainly would go to Wikipedia, Wikipedia in Wayunaiki in their own language. And probably they will have to use a Wiktionary because there would be new words for, for the kids and commons for illustration. Um, and to upload also the, 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 the photos and the, um, how do you say, the pronunciation of, of some of the new words they probably will uh, gather. And desirably Wikidata to probably try to, I don't know, visualize it. <laughs> but this would be very hard. I don't even know. This is why I propose it, because I don't know how hard it is to, to use it. The modality, I think it would be infographic, like comic-like. I think this is a good idea in, in bilingual, Spanish and uh, Wayunaiki, because they use both languages. And uh, it, Wayunaiki is oral, not very written language. So I think the two languages would be um, important and I think it would be printed and digital um, for WhatsApp uh, even though uh, they don't have many infrastructure technological uh, there is one phone for family that they share between parents and kids for, for working and studying most of the times there's just one cell phone in, in the house which is uh, something particular uh, preferably we'd be accompanied by a workshop and uh, the designer I, I would like to be like, from the YU community that way he would under she or she would understand uh, the art that should be used 
and uh, I would love to fund uh, if you can fund this project. <laughs> We will take the idea. I think that it's, uh, thank you, Hernan. And I think that it's really interesting to think who designs because it's, it's not the same uh, if the designer is a local designer, if the designer knows something about education or not. Uh, these designs were made by a designer when, that we were working with some years ago. So she knew Wikimedia identity, she knew how we work. And it's, that is really important because it like, makes a lot of more sense to the material. Anyone else? Don't be shy. <laughs> Someone? <laughs> okay. This is last thing. Yes, I win. <laughs> Yes, I think um, uh, for designing a proposal, I would start with, uh, well, I know already the curriculum, how it works in Peru, and as I implemented a program there. And I also know some stakeholders, like uh, institutions that can support the program. And also, um, I think there are also many other uh, institutions that would be interested in the program. And what Wikimedia project would I use? I think currently, um, some of the tools that are around Wikimedia projects are Lingua Libre, which is more uh, focused to minority languages and communities. So I think this is quite straightforward to use. You just need to uh, basically create your, create your account, create a user for, uh, for the speaker, and then you select a list of words in your mother tongue. And then the user or the yeah, the user can read the words, and those are recorded and saved in Wikimedia Commons. And then you can retrieve it and link it to the basically the voices are linked to the specific lexemas and words and so on. And then you can just use it for creating materials, um, uh, audiovisual materials. In, in and the modality that I was uh, focusing on maybe it's how to teach them to use that tool. It would be maybe. A printed because they have um, a phone uh, and Lingua Libre also works with the phone in version so it's super nice uh, but at the same time it would be also uh, applied on online course uh, easily to fo easy to follow like a how-to uh, tutorial and well the supporting I think I can design the program and I'm already doing it partially so it's kind of a work in progress yeah this would be Thank you, Erwin. Really nice uh, project or idea. And um, uh, something I was thinking about, it's um, maybe we think that to teach uh, Wikimedia projects, we have to always be inside a Wikimedia project. And it's not uh, that way. Well, the videos you showed yesterday, we can like go outside Wikipedia, think about that, and then go back again or, or other Wikimedia projects. So we can be like more out of the box when thinking about the educational materials that take us to other places or to do something else and then we come back to the usual or standard Wikipedia activities. Yeah, maybe someone, because I was talking in the morning, so that's why I'm sitting silence. So yeah, I just, um, I have a very similar idea. Uh, because, and uh, like, um, to use the fact that a heritage program is, is in the curr school curriculum in Poland, like from the beginning, Till like almost high school, on the different levels, and uh, uh, actually we made in the COVID some uh, wiki books, like wiki notebooks online, uh, using this, uh, and um, it it was like a small brochure, uh, but online, and uh, we used um, wiki sources a dictionary, Wikipedia and Wikimedia Commons uh, to compose this. This is on our website also, like to compose one note, notebook with all of these elements um, to, all, to not only um, cover the subject, but also to show them that they can click and go to the different sisters projects uh, and so on. 
but uh, another thing that I would like to uh, comment here that it's a, this is a good idea and uh, uh, we are making this wiki notebooks with volunteers and uh, you know like gluing uh, together something from dictionary something from wikipedia and then it was like not very nice yes and we paid for the um, to make it pdf graphic got paid and everything um, but then we already have our teachers in a new program and we ask them to make uh, lesson scenarios <laughs> including wikimedia and they uh, really uh, I, I know it's horrible, but they did it anyway without money. And uh, they were happy to invent something else uh, during the COVID than, you know, struggling with everything. And uh, now we have, like, not ma many, but around 10 different scenarios, like uh, about Polish Nobel uh, winners in literature and so on. They usually were uh, language teachers. And they made scenarios for lessons for another teachers, but with the elements of Wikipedia. And now I, did, I think I thought that no one is using this, but really they are spreading the word. So it's good when, uh, as you said, nobody knows that we have Wiki notebooks. Um, that we are, nobody was using this. We can see on the stats. But when the teachers were sharing that I made a lesson scenario, and this is on Wiki page, and he, she um, told this to her fellow teachers. They were using this. Uh, also, they know very interesting tools like Geniali. I don't know if you know this, Geniali. This is very popular in Poland among teachers. So they made everything on Geniali platform and they didn't want to use our strange <laughs> things. Uh, but this, uh, these platforms that are popular among teachers, so this was our discovery that we are doing something completely without sense <laughs> because they, they are not using this, they don't use it. It's, it's really a good platform, I use it a lot also, and you, ha you can make presentations and infographics, uh, but it's not open source, that is uh, one of the issues. It's important one thing you were saying, um, and, and also mentioned before, uh, not all the project, uh, when you are designing a long project, not all the things will be Wikimedia related. You can have things that are external to that. And this is something now we are starting to think in our next project, and it's something that when we are with the experts in pedagogy, they say, okay, your maybe your final goal is uh, writing an article on Wikipedia, but the activities you make in the 10 weeks before, them, all of them be related to Wikipedia. There will be some moment that they have to learn how to use that. But for example, if they are going to write about, I don't know, a film, uh, because the topic is history of cinema, uh, there, there will be other topics that are watching a film or something like that that are not related to Wikipedia and are not free content. So it's interesting that not all the things we do, if it's something long, should be every step is linked to Wikipedia. For me, it will be the, the best thing that every step is linked to a Wikimedia project. Like, okay, this is Wikidata and then to Commons, but maybe it's something easier than that. It's only uploading the words to Wiktionary and, and other, other things are external. So this is something we have to, it's, it's complex, but we have to talk to teachers about what things they already do that can be incorporated in us. Also something that Clara said that also happens in Argentina is that teachers recommend to other teachers to use tools. So the, the best one who can recommend a tool for a teacher, it's another teacher. So if we want to talk to teachers, we have to know how they think. And we have to know where to go in the path so that our tools get to the teachers because they are really important for them. So they, in the teacher's room, they tell us, ah, I know Geniali, oh, I know Wikipedia. And then they like, it's one, like a one-to-one -one work uh, that, uh, recommending the, the tool for each other. So that is really important also. In, at, at last in Argentina, it's, it's like that. Someone else want to share? Please. <laughs> It's not mandatory, but we have some other minutes. If not, we, we can finish. 
Well, we hope at last everyone uh, takes one idea or one thought to, to their homes. Um, we are here if you want to talk or ask something about the materials or about anything else. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. I think this was very, very useful for all of us to uh, hear about, to learn, and to get some new ideas. Uh, so, uh, we have 15 minutes until a coffee break. We can go to Atrium Room to uh, listen to their session, or we can uh, take a break a little bit earlier. And we will see um, each other here after the break. Thank you.